Okay, I'm here again with the um, little digital angle finder. Um, I thought I'd make a follow-up video, even though the first video was extremely long and boring. Um, some things I've learned in the interim um, of owning this thing and also taking it apart. And the first first thing to say is that um, these are widely available. They are just a sort of generic Chinese product. Now you get this a lot these days where uh, a Chinese manufacturer will um, develop a product to create the tooling for it, etc. Uh, and then um, we'll probably put it on something like Alibaba. Um, so a company like Little can come along and brand it. They just uh, stick their logo on it and uh, basically rebox it. Um, and there are companies all over the world that do that. Um, now, what I have found though, is you can get a very similar thing in Machine Mart, um, which is a, a local sort of importer, really, in the United Kingdom. Um, they're a bit like Harbour Freight in the United States. Um, and um, the Machine Mart version is um, considerably more expensive. It's £22. Um, this was £10. So, uh, and it's, it looks absolutely identical. Now, that's not to say it is exactly the same quality. These things do differ in quality. And of course, if you know you're buying enough, you can specify to the manufacturer exactly what you want in the product. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. What I also found is that very similar products on eBay um, are selling for about £15. Now, that uh, is quite unusual. I normally find that uh, even most basic things on eBay, um, when they come direct from China, do come extremely cheaply. The Chinese government subsidise um, international postage, so that's basically free. And if you buy direct from the manufacturer, you can buy things enormously cheaply. But in this case, um, they are selling for about £15. That may be something to do with the postage being more for such a big box. Um, it's, you know, moderately heavy. Um, I don't know, but um, if you do need one of these, and the little one for 10 quid is certainly the cheapest you'll get one. Um, so that's quite interesting. Now, I wanted to do a um, proper teardown of this device, as I didn't do that in the last video. So, now, one of the things I also want to note is uh, it comes in this uh, plastic box. I put the receipt in there, in there actually, which is a good way of keeping, uh, keeping the three year warranty going because otherwise you'll just lose that. So that can go back in there now. If I compare this to my trusty, um, very cheap um, <laughs> Aldi um, calipers, which uh, come in this nice blow moulded case. Now I think this is actually quite a nice thing. Um, you know, these, these are not the cheapest ones. Um, but they come in a blow moulded case and it just makes it a little bit better really. Because well, this is pretty flimsy. Um, but it's quite interesting to do a bit of comparison actually between these two products because they really work on the same technology. So let's have a look at that now. So just putting this to one side, in case it's to one side, we can we can do a comparison between the two bits of technology. And we'll note that um, with them off, as soon as you, uh, you move the, uh, the jaws in this case of this one, the slider wheel it comes on, so that's, uh, that's also the case with this. The other thing is that they uh, use a similar 1.5 volt. Actually, that's a good point. Maybe they're not 1.5 volt. They both run off a button cell. Um, yeah, they, they, that is a different battery. That's uh, this one is a uh, 2032 uh, lithium battery and that uses a, an alkaline cell. But basically the technology is very similar. The way these things work is that in this case there is a capacitive strip underneath here of, with basically lots of lines. And there's a device in here, pickup, that reads, uh, reads this line and um, from there it knows where the pickup is along that line. And all it's doing is it's just basically counting the pulses and adding them all up. Um, and from that it can very accurately 
measure where it is. Now, for it to do that though, it has to constantly be looking out for these pulses changing. Now, it's a capacitive um, system, so it's really unaffected by anything um, because by the time it's got in there, um, you know, even if there's water or grease or dirt or whatever, it doesn't really affect the capacitive pickup. Um, these things are so accurate and precise. You know, the accuracy um, is very good. I've measured these, um, even the really cheap ones against uh, a reference length, and they always come out very well um, within the precision of uh, 0 0.01 mil normally, which is really all you can ask for. In fact, they're probably these are almost as good as a um, micrometer. Um, in fact, my cheap micrometer, I really don't really. I don't really use it because this is just as good. Um, so that, that capacitance uh, measuring technique is very similar to this, which we'll see in the teardown. Um, but this is essentially counting um, how many divisions it's going through. And it con the, the main problem with these, as I said in the last video, is it constantly has to be aware. So that's why the display comes on, because when you actually turn it off, it doesn't turn it off, it simply just uh, turns the digits off, but the um, CPU in here is still having to count the pulses on, on both these devices. And this does um, have an enormous battery draw. And in fact, um, on this one it actually has a rating uh, of um, 19 uh, microamps. And, um, you know, that basically is uh, very high. That will drain this uh, 1.5 volt battery, if you look up the capacity of an LR44 battery, drain it in, uh, in a few months. Um, so much so that it comes with a spare battery in the blow molded case. has a, a, a space for a spare battery. So um, yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a problem with this, this technology. Now the good ones, i.e. the ones that aren't from a supermarket, um, and cost uh, a considerable amount of money more um, don't have this battery draw issue. Obviously they still have to draw current but they draw um, an order of magnitude less current and um, that's obviously an advantage. Um, however my um, reckoning is that these are uh, accurate and precise um, and relatively nice to use and uh, durable and uh, the batteries are so incredibly cheap I can pick up sort of 10 for a pound, as I'd have to um, live a very long time, um, some decades, with this tool for the more expensive one to pay itself back. Um, that is obviously with the caveat that I seldom actually use this. Um, if you were using it every day, well, you wouldn't run down the battery more often, but it might be nice to have something a bit more reliable. So, you know, um, do what you will, um, each their own. If you're going to use it day in, day out, I would buy the more expensive one because. Well, you know, uh, it's probably worth it, and you don't really want to have to keep changing the battery. For me, on the other hand, I just have a big stash of batteries in the same cupboard as I keep this. So, coming back to the uh, subject of the video, this digital angle finder, um, I would like to do, uh, first of all, a quick teardown. So, to tear this uh, device down, I have done this before, you can remove this cap, and, uh, and then there'll be a, a struggling bit. So what I've got to do here is uh, just undo this little nut. I did it up very tightly, so I'll have to back that off there. Um, now, when I put it back together, I am going to uh, use some Loctite. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to kill the power on this, which is quite difficult, actually. I'll just... Uh, Pull the battery out like so. Now, like I say, it is actually a different battery. It's a three volt battery, and it's a lithium battery. It's the um, digital calipers use um, a 1.5 volt um, alkaline battery. So, hmm, don't really know what. Uh, and these obviously are different uh, instruments, so, you know. The, but the technology is very similar and the, and the theory of operation is similar. Um, so it's quite interesting to compare them. And in fact, as I say, in, in Lidl they were being sold opposite one another. 
Well, this is uh, one of these uh, nuts that's had some Loctite applied to it for reasons that will become plainly obvious. Now, so the nut comes off first. It would be very useful if you take one of these parts and forget to have to put it back together. Then we have a wiper. Now, this, this is also a spring, I think. But um, this uh, transfers electrical continuity from uh, the centre portion to the outside edge. Um, so that's that's one thing there. Um, now, the next part that comes out is this uh, washer. And uh, now really I should be able to uh, drive out the centre portion. And uh, there we have that. Now what I'm going to need to do is uh, pause the video and um, I'm just going to remove these, uh, these few screws here. So bear with me and I'll do that. Okay, so here we are um, back again. I've changed the frame rate on my camera so hopefully I get a little bit more uh, light now. I've removed these uh, four screws and we've so got the uh, components as follows. Now, this um, top a casing comes off now because I've removed those screws. I'm going to uh, move it upside down, and uh, that gives us uh, a view of this uh, this casing now. Got some uh, zebra strips here, which um, transfer the information from the printed circuit board to the liquid crystal display, and then the two little button stubs. So, place them out of the way there. Now, here is the circuit board in situ. Now, what we can simply do is just pull that out, and that really feels the uh, stamping, um, not the stamping, the, uh, the drilled holes here, which um, locate the uh, PCB. Now, this is quite interesting because uh, you can, you can see that there's now sort of, well, a sensor in here of some kind to help this work. So to do that, I'm going to have to free this mechanism from, um, sorry, free the PCB from this sort of uh, casing. So I will, this requires two hands, so I will uh, pause the video and resume as followed. Alright, so if I got that apart, now this is just a simple... Uh, piece of moulded plastic with some little um, latches on the edge that hold the PCB in place and here is the PCB but it's uh, not one piece it is many and uh, if we just undo that you'll see that there's a, a little spacing ring here I'll put that up with that one and basically how this works is um, if I assemble these in order of how it sits on the device you have this disc, then the ring, which I will explain in a moment, and the washer, and then the little spring continuity thing, and finally the nut. Now, this nut squeezes the uh, whole assembly down, and um, Effectively, oh, and there's also actually a little disc in there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but that is attached to the printed circuit board, which we'll come to in a moment. So this assembly um, is is fixed together, and this disc cannot move in relation to this. And this assembly is fixed to that um, via the uh, screws. So, how does it work? Well, I don't know, but I can uh, sort of show you how I think it works. And this is a, I've got a part number on it, it's an HW1314 sensor. Uh, it was made in 2014. Now this is actually a little uh, riser board here. It's, it's got these two contacts. It's actually three contacts because uh, it's got that, uh, that little, um, wiper that wipes on here and uh, if you look it's actually a very simple circuit board you've just got the uh, the feed in from the battery here 
these little jumper connections um, go to the zebra strips, which are here. There you go, um, three capacitors, um, and two down there, another one here. The switches, which are uh, labelled correctly. And then on the other side of this board is probably more interesting than the other side. Um, oh, there's that little ring that's popped out there. That has three lugs that uh, locate into here. Um, the other side of the board is more interesting because we've got one of these little cobs. Um, that is a chip on board device. And uh, is the brains of everything. Now, of course, we don't really understand what's going on in there because obviously you can't see it. What you can see is that the uh, these traces on the uh, PCB come out and go to multiple pickup points here. Now, if you look at this, you'll see that this is this is exactly the same on the other side, and uh, this is the capacitance sensor. Now, presumably, um, these um, blades, they look like, are grounded out on both sides. And um, are connected to ground via this and via the, this little ring as well. And uh, this is simply then, uh, oh, look, it says mic on the circuit board there. Hmm. Who knows? Um, oh, yeah, two resistors there. All right, that's beside the point. So this is simply then looking at the change of um, the the change of capacitance uh, going around. I think it's capacitance anyway. I believe it's capacitance. It's much like the um, capacitance touch sensor on your uh, phone's uh, multi-touch input, and it's looking at the change in capacitance. And because it's got um, an offset to it, it can work out which direction it's change it's it's moving in. And because it's got so many pickups, it can uh, measure it to a high degree of precision. And um, it doesn't really care what uh, where it is, so long as it, it can measure the change. But what it's going to be doing is it's going to be counting every degree going past, in, and it will know which direction that's flowing in. Now, we saw in the last video that uh, you can do a, a great number of turns in one direction and then it will count going back. What I want to do in this video when I've got it back together is you'll see from this mechanism how it sees the uh, the sensor and uh, we'll see that it actually is able to count an enormous number of turns quite happily and then count going back. So this little chip in here is um, well, I wonder whether it's actually uh, several chips with one big blob of epoxy over it because it seems to be able to do so much um, and I wonder whether you can just uh, program it to do different things depending on uh, what device you have connected to it. So, you know, I think that really the, uh, the capacity of the chip is actually far greater than what it needs to do. So I'm going to put this back together. Now, when I put this back together, I will put a little bit of Loctite on these threads, um, just because if this nut comes loose, then obviously the device will just stop working completely randomly. So um, that would be my only caveat, putting it back together. Obviously, make sure you put it in upside down here so the zebra strips don't fall out so the LCD can work correctly. And, uh, you know, you put these spaces all back in the same place. So in the next shot you should see it back together and uh, we will do a little bit more testing um, and I'll show you that that little chip here um, really can do a, a huge amount of not only processing power but um, a huge amount of memory storage um, because uh, it, really if you think about it um, one turn is uh, 360 degrees so that's uh, just 360 but it's not actually because it's to point one of that so that's 3600 degrees and we know it will it will do that um you know hundreds well not hundreds of times because i've tested it up to 100 times but um i tested it up to 20 times and i'll show you that it works up to 20 times so um you know that is a very large number that's uh you know, in uh, in the, the tens of thousands range, um, which of course you know, oh wow, 
for a computer, it's probably nothing. But actually, I should imagine that although it only displays 0.1 of a degree, it's actually measuring too much higher um, accuracy than that because um, if it were only measuring to 0.1 of a degree, it could gradually lose accuracy over a period of 160, uh, 360 degrees. So I suspect this this little chip here is um is doing uh, a great number a great amount of uh, number storage and uh, also clock speed because um, as it wipes past it has to be measuring um, thousands of times per second otherwise it would simply just um, take two sim uh, signals and combine them into one which would uh, be misleading so um, yes I'll cut now and you will see it back together in one moment. Okay, so uh, here we have the device back together now um, to zero it out here and I've left this cap off because what I'm going to about to do, if you leave the cap on, it sort of winds itself up and locks down and uh, you can't turn it. So um, what I'm going to show you is if you do uh, if you do one whole turn on it, so it's 180 degrees and it come around. 360 it will go if you go over 360 it goes to error now i'm going to see from this how many times you can do it uh, round uh, in one direction and then back again and it will remember where it started so here we are at error that's one turn and we're going to do several now. So two and uh, three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten still on error eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, still an error, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. Now we've lost count somewhere there. Now we're going to go back the other way. So 39. 
There we go. Two, one. And just to give you an idea how good this thing is, come back down. Back to zero. So, you know, <laughs> that's measured um, well, 100 turns times 3,600. So, a very, very large number. Um, you know, that's uh, 3 million 600 turns. If I'm not, then it's 3 million. 6,000, 600,000 turns, rather. And uh, that um, little cob chip is counted up and uh, halfway there and counted back down. And it still gets it completely spot on. Um, it, it's just incredible. I don't know how far you could go because, I mean, 50 turns, that seems like a lot to me. Uh, but there we go. It, it managed that fine. Um, so yeah, quite an incredible device, and it just goes to show that um, even for something that looks so um, simple as this, that actually the electronics in it are hugely complex um, and capable, um, and also extremely accurate. I mean, like that is uh, just incredible. So, you know, I, I just wonder whether the, the, this um, cob chip actually um, in another life could be programmed in to display things other than degrees that it could actually um, display numbers of rotation, you know, maybe up to perhaps um, a thousand or perhaps, a, yeah, perhaps a thousand. On this display, perhaps there's a, an option for that, or perhaps a, a different display could be used with some extra buttons. Um, I'd like to hear from you if you think I'm, I've gone wrong on something, or used the wrong term. Um, also, I'd like to hear from you if you've come across um, that chip or that sensor um, being used in an application uh, that would make use of its amazing counting ability because uh, it seems rather under underutilized um, on this because frankly it could just get away with having less memory getting to 360 degrees and erroring out um, it also seems a bit of a shame that it can't actually count above 360 degrees because it clearly can count a bit above 360 degrees you know maybe perhaps you could it could go up to sort of a turn and a half or something like that that could be potentially quite useful. Um, so yeah, that concludes this video and uh, thanks for watching.